Hello, I'm Dr. Mahucci from the Eye Clinic of Florida, and this is our video presentation on the YAG laser treatment of lens capsule clouding after cataract surgery. During cataract surgery, the cloudy lens is removed from its capsule and a lens implant is put into that clear lens capsule. Leaving the lens capsule in place speeds recovery and dramatically reduces the chances of lost vision or infection. But with time, the capsule becomes less clear or less like saran wrap and more like wax paper, as seen here. The younger the patient and the more fancy the lens implant, the faster that clouding occurs. But almost everyone after modern surgery will at some point be bothered enough by the clouding of that lens capsule to require treatment. The treatment is relatively quick, painless, and low risk in properly trained hands. There's about a 99% chance of seeing better in my hands and a 1% chance of annoying problems and less than 1 in 1,000 chance of very serious problems that would require another surgery. Here's some photos of that wax paper-like clouding of the posterior capsule. Next, we'll see a video with the actual laser room sounds of me talking in the laser. Good. Just stay good, stay right like that, open up really wide. And I've got a nice opening so you can see through. And here's another photograph, or actually a video, of a uh, cloudy posterior capsule. And I'm trying to give you a couple of angles to see from. But you can see it's uh, our view in is uh, probably very similar to what the patient's view out is. The uh, laser has these little red light aiming beams that uh, come together and help us focus uh, the laser exactly on the... Uh, part of the uh, capsule we're trying to treat. Actually some of the uh, better lasers have offsets that allow you to treat just behind uh, the spot you want to treat uh, or just ahead so that you don't damage the lens. Uh, here you can see us making opening uh, into that capsule and now it's uh, or there was a relatively clear view afterwards. Here's another view of some clouding of the posterior capsule and the laser beams are focused right on the uh, posterior capsule there and you'll see the laser fire in a second and a small opening is created and so uh, instead of looking through wax paper now the patient's looking through the opening. One of the uh, tricks uh, that I, uh, this is probably more for the uh, doctors in the listening audience, but something I see commonly is that the uh, lens capsule opening is made too small and when that happens, uh, happens usually for one of two reasons. Either uh, doctors doing is too big of a hurry while they're doing the procedure, or the uh, uh, dilation at the time of the procedure is just not adequate enough to do the uh, procedure, and the uh, opening is made too small. So you want to make a nice big opening without uh, getting into vitreous behind the eye. Here, the anterior capsule, not the posterior capsule, has contracted. And it is a uh, smaller than the pupil's uh, nighttime, uh, the patient's nighttime pupil. So they see actually the front of this lens uh, capsule, the cloudiness. And so we make a little opening and that will pull apart. Again, uh, this is a plate lens. We're doing it on the short side of the plate. You really don't want to uh, do the long side of the, 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 the plate. And that will open up nice and big. You're going to want to do the posterior capsule too on those uh, because there's usually a once in a lifetime limit on capsulotomy or payment for capsulotomy from the insurance company, so you want to do it right. Here is uh, a crystal lens, and a uh, crystal lens is a lens implant that moves back and forth. It allows the patient to see distance and near well without glasses after surgery, um, and is one of probably the most fancy types of lens implants. Here, the uh, the you know, patient's expectation for seeing is high, and the uh, wax paper doesn't seem to be too uh, waxy, or the, the cloudiness of the capsule doesn't seem to be too waxy, but you'll see afterwards it actually is quite waxy and uh, limits the patient's vision. It's a good idea uh, with crystal lens, again on the uh, short side of the lens, to uh, make some anterior capsule cuts so that the, uh, so that the lens doesn't get pushed backwards. Here the posterior capsule is being lasered and you can see the uh, opening being made very easily here. Again, we're going to try to make the final size of the uh, opening uh, larger than the uh, 
most likely a natural largest size of the pupil that the patient would have, usually the nighttime pupil. There's a lot of stuff floating around here that um, usually will settle down so that you can't, uh, the patient won't see it and you won't see it. Um, this is not where floaters uh, come from after uh, any kind of procedure or just naturally, but that's in the jelly way behind the part of the eye that we're working on now. So we'll show you some still photos of before and after uh, at the end of our presentation. This is another still photo of some clouding of a toric lens implant or an astigmatism uh, correcting lens implant. Here uh, it's very important uh, to do the procedure uh, at least uh, three or four months after the procedure or longer. Don't really want to do these things too early if the patient's young has become clouded. But you can see the laser is relatively easy to do and that thin wax paper uh, like membrane, the clouding of the uh, capsule is easy to treat here with the laser. The uh, anterior capsule cuts are important to perform because uh, the tension in the anterior capsule can actually push these lenses back, uh, changing the patient's prescription. So you want to have the patient have a stable prescription. Uh, and in the worst case scenarios, especially with uh, plate lenses made before 1995 or 94, uh, the anterior capsule contraction can be so... Uh, intense that it can actually push the lens degrees. back into the vitreous so open. it's important to know uh, what kind of lens you're open. dealing with before you laser it and to tailor your laser treatment here's uh, another uh, toric lens that we're treating here uh, the wax paper has become very uh, or the <laughs> capsule has become very thick and we're uh, using the laser again to focus the red beams there and uh, treat it we'll open it up here now you can see the post-operative result. There the lens implant is with a clear view to the back. And that's what our lens looked like before the treatment. So a big difference. Here uh, is a picture from before and after. Uh, this is uh, long after, perhaps a few days or a week afterwards when we've checked and you can see all the debris is gone and there's a nice clear view to the back. So in summary, the clouding of the posterior and clouding and contraction of the anterior capsule are common after cataract surgery. There are techniques and lens implants that can help delay the process, but frequently it's not avoided. When blurred vision interferes with the patient's activities of daily living, then YAG laser treatment can help. The fancier the lens in general, toric, multifocals, and accommodating lenses in particular, and the younger the patient, the sooner the interference with functional vision. Complications are infrequent, but even less infrequent when the surgery is performed more than four months from the time of the original cataract surgery. Noting the position and size of the pupil before dilation and noting the position and size of anterior capsule contraction relative to the pupil size can help the doctor tailor their treatments to give optimal results. For example, if the uh, gag capsulotomy was stopped here, this opening would be too small relative to the patient's normal pupil size to see well. Treating the anterior capsule can stabilize prescription and for certain types of implants helps the patient avoid non-covered second treatments in the future. Medicare has a once in a lifetime per eye payment policy. Knowing what kind of implant is in the eye can help optimize results and avoid problems like posterior lens dislocation, especially with plate lenses. There are different types of laser focus focusing mechanisms and they can help avoid unwanted pitting of the lens. Using an Abraham contact lens during the procedure helps avoid that problem as well. And of course, in more complicated cases, if there's any possibility of removing or replacing the lens, it's better to postpone doing a capsulotomy. The YAG laser is one of the Many types of lasers used in ophthalmology and it can be used for many different treatments. The procedure for treating lens capsule clouding is one of the most common procedures that can help restore function. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, Dr. Mahucci, at the Eye Clinic of Florida.